Art Bergeron. Welcome to Bergeron Briefs, uh, the show that I am doing to focus on issues uh, about elders and um, of concern to elders. My name is Arthur Bergeron, as I mentioned. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I'm an elder lawyer. Uh, I do a lot of work with elders, but I really felt that rather than dealing with legal issues, I really wanted to focus on a number of other concerns of elders that you might have an interest in. With me here are two terrific guests, uh, Tammy Pazaricki, my good friend, uh, who does a lot of these shows with me, and Tammy uh, runs a wonderful program that she's going to talk to you about called Pleasantries, and Sarah Condon from Aging Well, another terrific program. Um, what we're going to focus on today uh, are, pro are day programs, programs uh, whose participants are typically folks who have some form of dementia, mostly caused by Alzheimer's, and we're going to try to get behind the doors of these places because always, always when I talk to clients who've got relatives or friends or whatever who they, who may be, whom I mention, you may want to look at one of these programs, they'll say, oh, my wife would never go to that. My mother would never go to that. So I want to talk about what these programs are and why people really go, right? So to start off, Tammy, can you just talk to me about uh, what Pleasantries is and who you are and why you do this? Sure. Well, I, I, I've been in healthcare a long time. Um, started out as a social worker. Alzheimer's program director, worked in long-term care nursing centers. And I found this gap of what was happening with folks between home mm -hmm. and adult day health, um, where there really wasn't much opportunity for a person to um, socialize and be yep. with other people with memory impairment. So I bought a home in Marlboro. It's a ranch home, and it um, it's beautiful a, a, alongside a lake. And I have about 10 to 14 folks who come to my home every day who have cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's, or other dementia. And it just provides that opportunity for the caregivers to get respite mm -hmm. um, and for the person with the disease process to be able to engage in meaningful activities throughout the day. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But Sarah, can you tell me about yourself and where you work and what you do? Sure. Uh, I am the program director at the Aging Well Adult Day Health Program on Maple mm -hmm. Street in Marlboro, and it's been there for five years. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is social work, some long-term care experience, a lot of adult day health experience. And Aging Well is the medical model day program, and we have nurses on staff, nursing assistants, who can help with uh, things that clients need help with. I see. And, and Tammy had mentioned that her, your program, there are about how many people typically there in a day? Ten to fourteen. And it's in this old single-family house. Mm -hmm. And your program, about how many people would be there in a about day? About eighty. Eighty people about 80. a day. Mm -hmm. There would be eighty who would be staying all day. Would they be yes. some folks in the morning? Some. No, so people stay for the day. They I see. So it's obviously a much larger. It's right. a larger facility. It's about 10,000 square feet. I understand. And, and before you did Aging Well, what did you do? I did home care. I yes. did home visits, geriatric social work home visits for Care Solutions in Westboro. So you've actually, you can kind of, you're in the position that you really kind of understand what's going on at home also, right. as right. well as kind of understanding. Exactly. You know, so the people that might be really appropriate to this kind of facility. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, let's start off by talking, Tammy, to your program. Uh, because I know that you know we've talked about the fact that your program tends to be geared toward people who are in the early stages, have mild forms of dementia. Right. right? So can you kind of describe for me the person who typically 
is coming to you? Sure. The caregiver and the person who is kind of in need of some care? Sure. It varies um, in relationships where it could be um, spouses. Yep. It could be children who seek me out for their parent. Um, and basically, they're looking for something for the person to do. Um, rather than sitting home alone and watching the TV all day and having nothing to do and having no engagement, they want their loved one to be happy during the day. Yeah. However, some of them also need supervision, cueing, reminding, um, and facilitating of activity. So they do need that um, attention in that way where the, yeah. their loved one doesn't really want them home alone. Um, not a good idea. So it brings folks in the earlier stages, people who are very high functioning, can use the bathroom independently, eat independently, yeah. socially engage, have conversation. But you can tell there might be some word finding difficulty. There, there's definitely some memory impairment. Some of my folks don't remember that they were there yesterday. Um, but it, it, it provides the family at ease that they know their loved ones in a great environment, being taken care of, and being supervised and safe. And, but when those people show up, I'm, once again, I'm thinking about my clients. Um, when those people show up, do, are, are they happy to be there? Don't you, aren't you finding people who are getting there and really feeling like, oh, what am I doing here? Or the, or the spouse or the kids saying, oh, I don't know, you know. What, we have a very way, uh, a good way of creative introduction. And basically what that is, is I really talk it out with the caregiver first. Mm -hmm. They either come to the place and see it, or we have a phone conversation. And it's always the question of, well, how, what do I say to my parent? What, saying, what yeah. am I going to tell them? And it, we get down to, I am a friend of the family. I'm your, your friend. I invited you and your parents to come for lunch. Um, what I find with pleasantries being a home-based model, it's, it's yeah. easier to get them there and see the environment without using those words, you know, I want to show you an adult daycare. I want to show you an adult day health program. It might be good for you. Right. So it's right. getting them comfortable with the idea. This is just a friend named Tammy. Right. Come over for lunch. Come see it. And we make it as comfortable and, and try to wipe their fears away before the time where I meet their loved one. I see. I see. So it's really a two-step process. So yeah. people could always call ahead and just kind of to talk to you about this and to kind of come in and see the place and get, it kind of is get a definitely sense of it. baby steps in yes. order to get them enrolled in the program and in, and in your program are people typically there are they there for the whole day and are they there multiple days are they typically there five days a week how does all of that work my program is a two-day commitment minimum yeah. um, and they my program runs Monday through Friday any eight hours between seven and six and it's really geared towards the caregivers needs because sometimes it's a child who needs to go to work and work an eight-hour day right. Um, right. some come two some come five and does your program provide any transportation are you getting people there not my program it's too small of a program to introduce yeah. transportation uh, most family members provide that in the morning and in the afternoon but there are other I really work with the families to give them other options that are out in the community yep. if that is a um, hardship for them to get them to and from I understand I understand so and, and when they're there right once again if you're, you're trying to convince my or dad that they're gonna go and you're like you're gonna I'm gonna be there for eight hours right well like, wh what what would you do? What, what the is day like a, what flies. Is a, what is a typical day like? <laughs> you know, it just flies. It you you turn around day? and it's 4 o'clock and you're like, how did that how happen? Did that happen? Mm -hmm. um, when they get there, they're welcomed with a warm hug and yeah. they sit down to, at the breakfast table. We enjoy breakfast. Everything's home cooked. Then we all mosey out into the sunroom that overlooks the lake and we start activities. That might mean exercise, um, all kinds of physical games, things of that nature. Nature. Then we break off into different groups. Some like arts and crafts. Some like to go for a walk, do gardening. Um, we have lunch together. Everybody sits together for a nice, healthy lunch. Then in the afternoon, it's whatever they want to do. Um, sometimes I have entertainment come in, uh, pet therapy come yeah. in. It's fulfilling the day. And, and like Sarah will tell you, we, we'll take day trips, try to get out 
and, yeah. and go about, but the days go by quick, and yeah. that's the key. So, mm -hmm. so do you like what you do? No, I you hate think? it. <laughs> it's <laughs> awful. She's so bad when she talks about her program. Sarah, can we just can we just talk about talk about your folks? Talk about the folks that are coming to your to your program. Mm -hmm. Who who do they? Uh, and I know you have a whole variety of folks, but right. among those folks who have got to say um, Alzheimer's related dementia issues, mm -hmm. right? Who who are they? And well, I think that Marlboro is really lucky to have both programs because we complement one another in the yeah. services that we provide. And we certainly provide services to many of the surrounding towns, including Grafton. Um, but, you know, Tammy mentioned that they might need queuing or some assistance. And the clients, the people that come to Aging Well, need more. The, the disease, whatever it might be, has progressed. So they might need some hands-on assistance in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. They might need their food cut. They might need some oversight or queuing with meals. They might need more assistance with initiating activities. I see. And then we're able to do that. I we see. have a staff to client ratio of one to six. I see. So you've got 90 people. So you've got how many people? About nine people working? During, we have 15 staff 15 members. 15 staff people working yep. during the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a lot. It's a combination of activities, staff, certified nursing assistants, nursing, yeah. social services, myself. And how do people find their way to you? Well, we get referrals from a lot of different sources. Mm -hmm. um, are, are many of your people people who have been participating in, a, in a, some kind of a day program before, but now just need something that is uh, more t more intense or more comprehensive? Sometimes, or sometimes they've never been to day programs. Some live with family, some live on their own. Sometimes caregivers, adult children, live out of state and they come to visit mom or dad and they just can't believe the situation. So it's referrals from a lot of different places. But the process does start with a tour. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that tour is with the caregiver alone. Just to get them a little bit more comfortable. Maybe it's not the place for them. Maybe it is. Um, and then the, the um, potential participant comes for a tour. And that's just a 45-minute visit and a chat with our social worker. And then it's a trial day. Yeah. And a trial day is free, and it's see so you, if you like it, no commitment. So you always start with a trial, just exactly. to see if this is really going to exactly. work. And a trial day could right. be an hour. It could be two hours. It could be three mornings. It could be whatever no. the person's comfortable with. You know, you start, first rule of social work, you start where the client's at, and you go from there.